Is yeah. that one of your children out there laughing? <laughs> You got three now? Three, that's right. Two boys and a girl? No, two girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. Are you through now? <laughs> Time to start. <laughs> Are you going to have more children? Well, my wife here? Rolling. I guess she is. In Rolling? <laughs> okay. You want to make, answer make that? a nice yes, yes, I'd like an answer to that. <clears throat> First father I've ever seen made up. <laughs> it's usually the mother that gets made up. <laughs> Father is willing to usually go along with his regular sallow complexion. I was willing. And a rough exterior. I think it's much better. I think a woman likes a man that way, don't you? I hope so. Yeah. Because I'm not going to wear this. Where were you born? No joke, I was born in China. You were, huh? What part? Pekin. <laughs> no, that's too easy. I was us, expecting right? it. <laughs> There's some things even I stop at. Ready, Eddie? You may fire when ready, Gridley. Okay, rolling. That's not really his name, Gridley. We okay. just Okay, Cameron. Everything all right, Pam? Ralph, okay. Could have heard the luck show if it wasn't for this. <laughs> now it's no soap. Don't forget to help us. I'm out of luck. So what did you say? Party. I didn't say that. Don't forget to help us with the child strap show. Let's go. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N A M E. Really? You bet your life. America's most beautiful comeback, smarter cigarette cases, magic action lighters, most beautiful dresser sets, presents Groucho Marx in the Elgin American show, You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here's that sterling Elgin American, the one, the only... What a ridiculous name. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Thank you, thank you. Well, well, here I am again with the $1,000 for one of our couples. George Fanneman, who's to try, first to try for it? A pair of newlyweds, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they come now, Mr. and Mrs. Howard Scala. Right up here, ladies. <laughs> Welcome, youngsters, for Elgin American Compacts. And a happy new year. And if you say the secret word, you win a 16-millimeter Apollo Sound movie projector that sells for $129.50. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Newlyweds, eh? Well, you're the tallest newlyweds I ever saw. Uh, Howard uh, Scala. Huh? Scala, is that the way you pronounce it? That's right. What, what kind of name is that? That's a uh, German Italian? name. Scala? It's a German. <laughs> What's so? Doesn't sound German. It sounds uh, well. I was thinking of La Scala, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Italian Opera House. You're you're the groom, I presume. You're the groom, I presume, huh? That's right. I just wanted to be sure. I can't see that high up. Huh? How how long have you been married? One, One week. week. That's two weeks between you. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, Arlene. Arlene. Huh? Right. I'll just call you Shorty. Is that all right? That's then? okay. Uh, how tall are you? I'm exactly six feet in my stocking feet. And uh, how tall are you in your bare feet? The same. You wear very thin stockings, eh? <laughs> how, how tall are you, uh, Boxcar? Six foot six and a half. Six foot six and a half, huh? Now, how's the weather up there? Well, not quite as smog as it is down there. <laughs> Reminds me of Bob uh, Sherwood, the playwright. He's an old friend of mine, and he's uh, six foot five and very thin. I said to him one day, I says, Bob, uh, what do you say to people when they ask you how the weather is up there? He says, I spit in their eye and tell them it's raining. <laughs> what, what did you say when I asked you what kind of a name that was? It was uh, German. German. What? Uh, huh? A German what? Name. Dachshund? Or, uh, <laughs> Hey, 
Miss Sidney eager to give away things on this show. Yeah. <laughs> what did he win? I'll tell you, Groucho. Huh? Well, I wish you would. Huh? All right. <laughs> they won an Apollo 16 millimeter projector. Which sells? For $129.50. That's right. Hollywood movies or movies they take themselves. Well, nobody wants to show Hollywood movies anymore. <laughs> Now, let, let's see, when I got uh, wiped out by that thing, uh, uh, where are you from, uh, Arlene? I'm from California. You're a very beautiful girl, you know that? Thank you. Did you know that, too? I certainly did. <laughs> and do. You're from California. Which part, Arlene? This part. <laughs> well, where's the rest of you from? <laughs> where are you from, Howard? I uh, grew up in this part, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you, you better get out of town, or you may never stop growing. Uh, how much do you weigh, Howard? Oh, about uh, 305 pounds. Is that on the hoof? <laughs> Arlene, how did you meet this mighty Joe Young? I met him in the California Tip Toppers. Mm -hmm. What's the Tip Toppers? Well, it's a club for tall people where the, uh, well, the girls have to measure at least uh, six feet. Well, whose feet do they measure? No, the, the girls uh, have to be at least uh, six feet tall and the fellows at least be uh, six foot four. You're not stretching things a bit, are you? <laughs> you were both at the Tip Toppers Club? Uh, how, how did you meet them? We were washing dishes at a Tip Topper party. Is that what you do at the club? They just wash dishes? <laughs> Don't time. you ever get them dirty? You just wash them? <laughs> at the time, it was uh, we were prospects in the club. And, uh, of course, all prospects must do all the cleaning up. Mm -hmm. So I was washing and he was wiping dishes. And? And what happened? Well, mm -hmm. we were talking and so forth. You threw him a towel or something? <laughs> yes, over the suds. <laughs> I suppose if you'd have had an electric dishwasher there, you'd never met, huh? <laughs> Shows you how these modern inventions are ruining everything. <laughs> were there a lot of your tall friends at the wedding? There were a few. Were they all high? Uh, <laughs> where did you go on your honeymoon, Arlene? Mount McKinley? No. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. Why, why did you go to Phoenix? Well, it's such a, well, I have to say, the climate. You like it's a nice the, climate, You yes. like the climate there. What, what do you do for a living, Howard? Uh, I play uh, left tackle for the Green Bay Packers professional football team. main reason that I'm uh, not playing now, I was disabled at the first of the season with a slight injury, and so now I have to wait till next year. What happened? What uh, happened? <laughs> oh, I dropped two metatarsal bones in my right foot. You dropped them, you said? <laughs> what do you do, carry them in a bag? <laughs> what do you mean you dropped some tarsal bones? Well, they, uh, you strew them around the field? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, fell out of place. And somebody tackled you? Is that what happened? I was hit on the leg. You know. Imagine tackling this when it's running down the field. <laughs> I'd rather stop in front of the super chief. Eh? <laughs> and now, now do you, well, how do you live? Do you get insurance for... Uh, do you well, get loan uh, insurance or something? <laughs> no. Are you boning up on your studies? <laughs> well, uh, right now, at present, I'm unemployed, but I mean, I'm going to work here in town until next season. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to... Go back. Go back. I hope. <laughs> you ever play against Notre Dame? No. Afraid not. <laughs> you look pretty happy, too, huh? <laughs> Arlene, uh, where, where did you work before you were married? Well, I still do. I work at the Carnation Milk Company. Oh. You as tall now as when you were single? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's odd, really, because after they get married, lots of men find themselves very short. <laughs> well, in spite of the fact that you two giants make me feel pretty low, we're happy to have you here. Now, Fenneman, you have some perfect gifts, I presume, for these people. I certainly do. Well, whip them out. Huh? All right, for Arlene. We have a sterling silver compact engraved in 14 karat gold, an Elgin American, of course, the Arlie. Thank oh, you. thank you. How do you like it, Shorty? Very pretty. Mm -hmm. And uh, what have you got for uh, Big Boy? Uh, well, for Howard, we have 
A sterling silver cigarette case engraved in 14 karat gold, also an Elgin American, holds 16 king size and 20 regular cigarettes, Howard. Thank you, it's very nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Arlene, would you mind looking in that compact and looking in the mirror and see how you look? If I can get it open. Can you open it? Huh? Yes. What do you see? My face. Yeah. I got robbed. All I can see is my face. <laughs> Arlene, as a tall girl, you must have had some unusual experiences. Do you know any tall stories that you'd care to relate? Well, I think of one that uh, was quite embarrassing. I was in a department store, and I was standing by the escalator with some packages, of course. And um, as I was standing there, accidentally one of my packages hit the uh, button which controls the escalator to make it stop. And, of course, it hit it. And the escalator stopped with all the people on it. And at first, I didn't realize it was me that had hit the button until I looked around. And Is that the, the first time you hit the button? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I was quite embarrassed because I slowly walked away. And what happened to the people on the escalator? Are they still there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they walked down very fast. What do you, oh, I forgot to ask you, what do you do at the milk company? I'm working in the Albers Milling Company accounting. I thought you said you were with a milk company. Well, Albers Milling is part of Carnation Company. Oh, I see. You have nothing to do with the cows. Or... <laughs> no, I don't milk them, thank goodness. <laughs> have to be a pretty high cow for you to milk them. <laughs> now, what has been your most unusual experience as a telephone pole? <laughs> well, uh, most unusual one I can think of is when I was in school. Why'd you they go had to school? A, it's college. I went to Compton. And uh, they had a party one night, a house party, and I was near the front Is window. Is that anything like Linkletter's house party? <laughs> <laughs> and I just said that because Linkletter is sitting out here tonight. He'd have been very angry if I hadn't mentioned it. Of course, we'll take it out tomorrow, but that's another story. <laughs> and we may take Linkletter out tonight. <laughs> Did you ever take out Linkletter? <laughs> I'm off on the milking cows. Eh? <laughs> And just about as productive. Now, where were we? Well, and uh, I started to walk out the door and pause to talk to someone. And as I backed up, I tripped over a small stool that was so far down I could hardly see it and fell. You're through. a very graceful couple, you two. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped and slightly fell through the bay window. And <laughs> Have you still got the bay window? I can't. Answer. <laughs> You'll get it in a few years. <laughs> now, what do you do at your club, Arlene? I mean, what, uh, what do they do there? Well, you just don't stand uh, there and walk around tall, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> it's a social club, and also they, uh, all uh, tall people can congregate and uh, talk over the problems that tall people have. Well, what, what are the problems that tall people have? Plenty. <laughs> well, what, for example? Huh? Well, for instance, there's clothes, uh, beds. King size beds are very uh, rare. Also, uh, in the houses, there aren't many uh, facilities for people who are very tall, like the sinks or windows, the doorways, particularly. Your head gets mighty sore walking through those doors when they're up below. <laughs> and you all a wearing apparel. You spend time ducking then, huh? Yes. <laughs> have you ever gone out with a short man, Arlene? Yes, I have. I don't mean financially. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean physically, huh? Yes, I have. And uh, were you embarrassed or anything, or was he embarrassed? Yes, I was embarrassed because I wasn't told he was short at first. It was oh, a blind, it was a blind date. date yes. Was he blind at the finish or? Uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was. Uh, how big was your uh, smallest girlfriend, uh, Howard? Oh, around uh, four and a half feet. <laughs> yes, uh, I was four and a half feet at the time too. <laughs> I don't get that. Were you on your hands and knees? <laughs> How do you mean you were for only four and a half feet? Well, you have to grow up. Oh, I see. You, so you were just, a, down, just you know, a little fellow. Right. I see. Well, in the future, pick on somebody your own size. Huh? <laughs> Are there many tall girls born in your family, Arlene? Well, they all have to be babies. They all have to grow up. <laughs> I'm not doing very well here tonight. <laughs> 
I'm on the wrong side of this microphone. Eh? <laughs> Arlene, I've never kissed a real tall girl. Would, would you mind if I kissed you? Not at all, if Howard didn't mind. <laughs> How about it, uh, big boy? Well, it'd have to be over my dead body. Well, if that's the way you want it, Fenneman, get the gun, huh? <laughs> Howard, uh, seriously, could I kiss your wife for $20? No. How much Not is it a funny. foot? <laughs> suppose, I, suppose I kiss her and you didn't know anything about it. Oh, I'd know about it. Well, I guess I'm going to have to trap you. Um, Howard, I'll bet you a buck. I'll bet you a buck I can kiss your wife and you won't know a thing about it. Bet? Okay, it's a bet. Okay. Would you mind moving aside there? Huh? <laughs> Just a moment. You saw me kiss her, didn't you? That's right. I lose. Here's your buck, huh? <laughs> well, I've kidded you two about your height, but I, I'm sure you're tall enough to overlook everything. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together as a team for $1,000. But right now, I want you to pay attention to this. Everybody goes for Elgin American's terrific new socialite lighters. So beautifully designed and finished, they look like jewelry, and they work like magic. That's their marvelous magic action. The most modern, surefire mechanism of any lighter made. Yet these last words, socialite lighters for men and women, are priced from just $4.95. By all means, see them tomorrow at your leading store. And buy the finest lighters you can use or give. Socialite lighters by Elgin American. Let's, uh, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,000 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. All right. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs with baby in the title as your category. Is that right? That's right. All right, now here's your first question. You have twenty dollars. How much are you going to bet? Five. Talk right up now. Five. Five dollars. All right. Jerry Fielding will supply the music. You give me the title. Play, Jerry. Yes, sir. That's my baby. Is right. And we're off to a great start with twenty-five dollars, Groucho. Wish I had my buck back. Now, all right. Here's it. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the uh, $25 will you try? Ten. 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 $10. Okay, here we go. What is, what is the name of this song? Melancholy Baby. Melancholy Baby's on the nose. The priming now, we have $35. All right, you got $35. Here's your third question. How much of the $35 are you going to try? Twenty. Twenty. $20. Give me the title of this baby song. Okay, Jerry. $55. All right, you're climbing up. You got $55. How much of the $55 are you going to try? $30. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to bet uh, $30. What is the title of this song? Everybody loves a baby. Pretty baby is right. They know it. He, he said the first line. Oh, of course they know it. Look how honest they look. You can't take that away from them. Wait a minute. Start again, Jerry. and Happy New Year from Elgin American Compacts. Now stick around, you may still get a chance at the big question. Well, Groucho, the secret word <laughs> is still named, I think. Um, and we have some people out here who have you been... Have, so, right? Yes, we do. That's Select very interesting. Thank you. Selected by our studio audience. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, John. Yeah, I know we'll start over. All right, All right let's have a clean break now. Huh? All right. I'll walk around the block. All right. 
Okay, wait a minute. Would you walk? Oh, just keep walking back and forth. <laughs> till Fenneman extricates himself from this dilemma. We change minds. You may fire when ready. All right. You have to ask me. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you want me to say? Go ahead, George. Go ahead, George. <laughs> That's some ad lib, eh? <laughs> Groucho, the secret word is still name. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience select. <laughs> our secret word is no longer name because apparently our next couple will say it. <laughs> Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a car hop and a married man, and here they come. This is Evelyn Fredrickson and Mr. Larry Stearns. Meet Groucho Marx. You come over here. Hello, folks, and welcome to You Bet Your Life. Hello. Hello, and how are if you? If one of you says the secret word, he wins a 16-millimeter Apollo Sound movie projector. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Evelyn uh, Fredrickson, is that right? That's right. Miss uh, Evelyn Miss, Fredrickson? that's right. Thanks for that. You're the car hop, huh? Yes, I am. I knew it. My headlights started flashing the minute you walked in. <laughs> Where are you from, Miss uh, Fredrickson? Uh, I'm from Shannon's on Pico and Sepulveda. Shannon's, uh... Shannon's Drive-In. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How are the hamburgers? Uh? They're terrific. Well, if they're anything like the car hops, then uh, Mr. St uh, Steins? Larry Steins? Larry Steins. You're the husband? Yes, I am, sir. Mm -hmm. How long have you been married to, Evelyn? Oh, that, that isn't my wife. <laughs> well, don't come and run into me with your troubles. I... <laughs> are, you, are you married? Yes, I am. Do you have any kids? Three and I think four pretty soon. <laughs> When were you home last, huh? Uh, does your wife know you're out with a car hop tonight? Well, my wife, uh, I'm out with my wife tonight. You just said she wasn't your wife, no. <laughs> what are you trying to hide there, Larry? My wife's out in the audience, sir. Oh, see. Trying to hide your wife, eh? <laughs> How did you meet your wife? Well, uh, decided I'd take some photography at night school. I thought I'd learn something, maybe. And, uh... Well, don't be too despondent. Huh? And, uh, well, actually, one, one night there, I met her in the dark room. And, uh... You met your wife in the dark room? Huh? Yes, sir. Was she well-developed? And... <laughs> I don't know how that crept in there. I... Yes. I'll creep out again. Would you mind going ahead? Well, I used to, I used to uh, go to photography with a friend of mine, a guy named George. That's a good name for a friend, I think. <laughs> well, we used to fool around in the dark room. He'd sock me and I'd sock him and... You, you went in the dark room and just socked each other? <laughs> well, just while, while we... How did you know who you were hitting in the dark? Well, I did and I hit my wife that time, or she wasn't my wife then. And uh, that's where the trouble began. <laughs> You hit your wife, and now you've got four kids. Huh? Not quite four yet. I think four. Well, uh, what happened after you slugged your wife, who was then uh, just a stranger to you, huh? Well, she decided to uh, tell me off a little bit, and she's been doing it ever since, I guess. I... Well, how did she know you hit her if it was pitch dark in there? She found out. You tell her? Well, I had to apologize in a sort of a way, and of course... The other guy, he ran out in a hurry, so I was left there. There was nobody else. So I got stuck with the crime. It's a very sad story, all. <laughs> Evelyn, uh, just what, what is a, a car hop? A car hop is a, is a car waitress. Let me see. You wait for cars, is that what you <laughs> Why do they call you car hops? Uh, was your mother frightened by a kangaroo? No, it's because we hop from car to car. Do you hop on one leg? Or... No, we hop on two legs. Where do you do all this hopping? At, at Shannon's Drive-In on mm. Pico and Sepulveda. It has a faintly familiar ring to it. <laughs> Is it true that many girls become car hops in order to be noticed by movie producers? Yes, I believe that is true. Oh, fan, I'll bet there are more movie producers trying to get noticed by car hops. 
But what are the requirements uh, to get a job as a car hop? Well, a car hop should be quick, fast, alert, able-bodied. Well, right, you seem to fill those requirements. <laughs> you should be well-rounded in other words, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. But why do drive-in restaurants uh, specialize in hiring beautiful girls? Because it draws more business. Nice-looking right. car hops mean that uh, more business? Right, much more business. Well, if you mean business, I'll change my tactics. <laughs> my wife means business, too. <laughs> Larry, what sort of work do you do? Uh... Well, I was teaching people how to drive. <laughs> and was your car wrecked? No. How long did it last, Larry? A week and a half. How'd you lose your job? Well, I was teaching someone how to drive and I got a ticket for giving the wrong signal. My, my, my hunch is you've done a lot of teaching around this town. <laughs> Anything unusual uh, happen around your place? You mean beside the kids? Or... You must have had an, an, an eventful life. Uh, what's well, your most unusual story, Larry? Well, I, I had a lot of jobs. I never seemed to keep any of them too long. Well, if you keep putting out the wrong hand, I can understand why. The most unusual thing, I was selling vacuum cleaners for a little while. And uh, I, I sort of developed a system. I thought it was pretty smart. I'd leave the machine out in the car, the new machine, and go in and demonstrate with, a, with their old one because if you walk up to the house with a machine, they throw you out, they slam the door in your face. And uh, it's when I lost my job because I was in the house demonstrating without a cleaner and her husband came home and... husband say when you saw you demonstrating without a cleaner? <laughs> Was he amused by this? Or? I didn't give him much chance to say or be amused at all. I, I thought I'd better leave. <laughs> Was the motor running on your car? <laughs> Tell me, uh, Hopscotch, you don't care if I call you Hopscotch, you? Eh? No, go ahead. Which gives you the most trouble, men or women customers? I believe uh, women give you the most trouble. Well, why is that? Well, they're more demanding and... and what do they demand? Uh, new car hops? Uh, <laughs> ugly car hops? I think they demand men car hops, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, which would you rather wait on, uh, men or women? Oh, I believe I'd rather wait on men. They're much easier to please. In what way? Well... <laughs> they don't expect such fast service, and they don't expect you to... Uh, be too pleasant. I mean, you don't have to put out so much to a man as you do to a woman. You see. <laughs> is, is your drive-in uh, at a good location, uh, Evelyn? Oh, I should say so. I believe... Where is it? <laughs> he goes to Volvada. <laughs> How many cars would you say, estimate, would you say pass there in a day? Huh? Mm, about 100,000 cars, I should say, pass by. Well, why do they pass by? Isn't the food any good there? <laughs> They don't all pass by, huh? No, no, definitely well, what do you, not. What do you mean when business is slack? Uh? Well, we, when business is slack, we just stand around and wait for them to come in. Mm -hmm. Well, to make business good, what do you do? You just uh, take in your slacks? Or... <laughs> no, we wear shorts when you, it gets you hot. You wear shorts? Yes. Uh, when it gets hot, you wear shorts, huh? Yes, that's right. I won't answer that. Now, Larry, <laughs> you've been standing there a long time. What's the matter? Can't you get any service? I don't seem to be doing very well. well why don't you blow your horn? <laughs> Tell me, how do you like driving into a restaurant when you just want a quick sandwich, Larry? Well, you mean a drive-in? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's good. You I go didn't in... mean zeros, huh? <laughs> I like it because uh, you go in, you don't have to get dressed up or anything. You just... Isn't that kind of chilly? Uh... <laughs> What's your chief complaint against customers, Evelyn? I believe my chief complaint is people that are always honking their horns. 
What about the wolves who want you for an hors d'oeuvre? Huh? <laughs> well, that's an idea, too, that's yes. That's an idea. You get pretty weary of them, huh? Sometimes, yes. What would you say of the percentage of men who uh, flirt with you? Uh, oh, 100%, I... 100%? Huh? 100%, yes. Mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> that's pretty good average if you can that's keep it. pretty good average. <laughs> I've often wondered about the strange language that the car hops use. Uh, you know, you shout orders back to the cook. Uh, what are some of the code words you use? Well, there's uh, make one, that means hot chocolate. Lechi means milk. Draw... Lechi means milk? Mm-hmm. What is the derivative of that? Huh? That's uh, milk. I see. Well, why do they say... <laughs> why do they say lechi? I thought that was a nut in Chinese or something. Huh? That's a Spanish word. Lechi means milk in oh, Spanish. Oh, I see. Right, yeah. uh -huh. It's too, e too tough to have a milk in English, I see. <laughs> Do you ever scream any code words that have nothing to do with food? Yes, such as uh, 110, that means here comes the boss. <laughs> now we know, let's see. And, what what uh, does that mean, boss is coming? Suppose he is coming. That means do everything right, immediately. And when he's not there? Well, when he's not there, you're supposed to still do everything right, naturally. Well, I won't press you. <laughs> now, suppose I just drove up with my girl and my hot rod and ordered a Coke and two straws. What would you holler? Stretch one for two deadbeats. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> now we know what we think. And what what uh, does that mean, Boss is coming? Suppose he is coming. That means do everything right, immediately. And when he's not there? Well, when he's not there, you're supposed to still do everything right, naturally. Well, I won't press you. <laughs> now, suppose I just drove up with my girl and my hot rod and ordered a Coke and two straws. What would you holler? Stretch one for two deadbeats. <laughs> well, cancel my order. You can't call my girl a deadbeat. <laughs> well, we enjoyed having you here tonight. Now, we have some ideal gifts for each of you. George, proceed with the honors. For Miss Fredrickson, Elgin American's beautiful simulated pearls. They're the finest pearls made by man. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Thank you very much. And for Mr. Stearns... Well, what have you got here for Larry? I have an Elgin American slim cigarette case in jeweler's bronze that looks like gold. There you are, Larry. That's swell. Why don't you hold it up, Larry, and show it to the customers? Huh? All right, that's enough of that. Man. Now let's play your bet your life for $1,000. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. Now, Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners how much the first couple won. <laughs> how are you two getting there? Still married? Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected dice expressions as your category. Is that right, uh, Larry? Yes, it is. That's quite revealing, that category. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? I said 10, 12. How much? Talk right up. She says 12. $12. All right. <laughs> Snake Eyes is a throw of what number? Two. Two is right. <laughs> And they're on their way with $32. Remember, you're going for $1,000 a night. How much of the $32 you're you going to try? Talk right up. Evelyn. 25, Here's the microphone right here. 25. 25. Make believe this is Larry, huh? You're going to 25. try $25. <laughs> okay. Big Dick is a throw of what number? 10. 10 is correct. <laughs> Now they have $57. Now you have $57. Now uh, here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? I'd like to bet it all. Bet it all. You want to bet it all? These two are really gamblers here. Okay, boxcars is a throw of what number? Oh, that's 12. 12 is correct. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have $114. All right, you're shooting away up. You got $114. And how much are you going to go for? You want to shoot it all? Shoot it all, shall we? Shoot it all. All right. It's no, it's no more dangerous than going in a house without a vacuum cleaner. Here it is. <laughs> $114. Little Phoebe is a throw of what number? Five. Five is correct. And they wind up with a grand total of $228. Put it there, kid. You want to
Thanks to both of you and a happy new year from Elgin American Compacts. Now, in just one minute, our last couple will play You Bet Your Life, and then we know who gets the $1,000 question. But right now, listen to this. You know, Elgin American Compacts always look like a lot more than they cost. Smart as tomorrow in fashion, master craftsman engraving to the last detail. Clasps, mirrors, powder doors so flawless, they rival many other compacts that cost a lot more and packaged with the luxury of a gem. For yourself, for every woman on your gift list, you can't beat the greatest value of them all, exquisite, finest quality compacts by Elgin American. Okay, now we'll soon know who's going to earn the most money and get the $1,000 question. George, who's ahead so far? Well, the... George, who's ahead so far? <laughs> the car hop and the... Isn't he cute, huh? <laughs> The car hop and the married man are ahead with $228, and the uh, secret word is still name. N-A-M-E. Name. Pretty we, brilliant, huh? You figured it. I should say. We invited some college football players to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Jess Swope. And his partner is a Hollywood chiropractor, Dr. Mar Elia. And here they come. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> right in here. Welcome, kids, for Elgin American Compact. And a happy new year. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins a 16 millimeter Apollo Sound movie projector. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Jess, uh, you're the football player, huh? Yes, sir. A, so we have a surplus of football. We have a boy here from the Green Bay Packers. Here. You know him? No, sir. Well, you may before you throw here. <laughs> uh, how, how tall are you, Jess? Six foot three, sir. Well, you're only a baby, huh? <laughs> You gotta be taller than that to be a big man around here tonight. <laughs> How old are you, Jess? 22 years old, sir. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Are, are you married? No, sir. I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> Why aren't you married, Jess? I just haven't got much time for girls. How much time do you need? <laughs> have, you, have you got a girl? Yes, sir. Well, would you mind telling us about her? Well, she's about this tall, and she's got big brown eyes and sort of uh, brown hair, and she's really nice. Sort of mahogany, isn't she? <laughs> what, what school do you attend? University of Southern California, sir. And you play football for USC? Yes, sir. Well, you're the only one on the team that does, huh? <laughs> What position do you play? Horizontal or perpendicular? I play left offensive guard. Offensive guard? Yes, sir. Uh, have you tried a dab of perfume behind each other? <laughs> Jess, uh, what's your reason for going to college other than learning how to be offensive? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be a coach, sir. A coach? Yes, sir. What kind of a coach? Hudson coach or...? <laughs> well, football and track, mainly. Oh, I see. And uh, you're Dr. Sheikh uh, Ma Elia, is that? Yes, sir. Is that right? Did That's I pronounce right. it correctly? Uh, what kind of a name is that? That's uh, an Iranian or Persian name. Oh. Well, here we go again. You said name, and that's the secret word tonight. George, tell him what he wins. You win an Apollo 16 millimeter sound movie projector. With it, you can show movies you take yourself or Hollywood saw movies. Retail value, $129.50. Thank you. That'll teach me to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> now, uh, uh, what, uh, do you say that's a Persian name or? Iranian or Persian name. Uh, I see. Only one answer between you now. Uh. <laughs> Make up your mind, Doc. Well, you see, Iran, uh, Iran is the correct name, but most of the foreigners call Persia. Mm -hmm. So Reza Shah Pehlavi put it onto the world, it should be called by its original name, Iran. Well, That's your ruler is over here now, isn't he? Yeah. That's the son of the... Uh, well, study there uh, now, uh, <laughs> Now, what, what did you say, uh, Doc? He's the, he's the son of the... He's the son of the gentleman that put this rule out onto the world. <laughs> His name was Reza Shah Pahlavi, but this uh, man's name is uh, Muhammad Reza Shah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, 
Now, let's skip the whole thing, huh? <laughs> now, uh, you say he's from Iran? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What was he r running from? Uh... <laughs> Tell me, uh, do Persian kittens really come from, uh, from Persia? Not necessarily. Uh, usually they come from Persian cats. it if I went over to your house and stole your Persian rugs. Huh? <laughs> I tell the jokes around here. Yes, I used to tell the jokes around here. I know a lot about stealing rugs because I used to hook Persian rugs. <laughs> You're a chiropractor, is that right? Yes, sir, am I am. Yes, sir, I am a chiropractor. Uh -huh. And uh, what sort of work do you do? <laughs> I locate the cause of their suffering at the spine. What do you use, a compass? Uh, <laughs> take x-rays. You take x-rays? Yes, sir, of their spine. Uh -huh. Then give adjustment with hands to correct the cause of their condition at the spine so the innate healing power within them can cure them. Well, I'll bring my wife over. <laughs> She's got all the backbone in our family. <laughs> are, you, are you married, Doc? Yes, sir, I am. Mm -hmm. any, any children? I have one son. Yeah. How did you meet your wife? I met my wife here in Hollywood while I was a professional man. I was invited to have a Persian meal at her home, and I found her to be a very good cook and good-looking, and so here I am. What did they feed you, Persian ivy? Uh, uh, Persian shish kebab. Shish kebab and pilau. Shish kebab and pilau. Well, I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> are you still here, Jess? Yes, sir. <laughs> You haven't made a move for several minutes. <laughs> You're not playing football for USC now, you know. <laughs> Tell me, what do you want to be after, after college? I mean, do you want to play professional football? No, sir. I, uh, I'm hoping to go to the Olympics in 1952. Uh -huh. Well, I think you're smart and stay, stay where the money is. Stay in college football. <laughs> Now, Ducky, uh, you don't mind if I call you Ducky, eh? No, sir. What did you want to be when you were a boy? I want to tell me a man, because that's a very old joke. <laughs> what did you want to be when you were a boy? I wanted to be a sheik like my father. Your father was a sheik? Don't tell me he was Rudolph Valentino. No, sir, he was not Rudolph Valentino. He was a real sheik. Oh, Errol Flynn, eh? <laughs> You must be the son of the sheik, huh? Being the son of my father, I was the son of a sheik, but now I am a sheik myself. Oh, you are, huh? Yes, sir. Well, you're a doc in sheik's clothing, is that it? <laughs> well, since you're also a chiropractor, you'd better straighten me out. You say you, you are a sheik? Yes, sir. Well, how do you find time to be a sheik? You see, Mr. Marx, uh, in this country, they have different uh, meaning for a sheik. Yeah. It, uh, it looks like in this country you have to be a good-looking, a good storyteller, or a great lover in order to be sheik. But in Persia, it's altogether just the opposite. Uh, to be a sheik, you have to be a leader of a tribe, or a high priest, or a very uh, well-trained leader in your field. Then you are known as a sheik. That takes care of USC. Huh? <laughs> Not a sheik on the squad. Huh? <laughs> now, Doc, I don't want to get nosy, but tell me, uh, have you... Uh... Have you got a harem? No, sir, I do not. It's because against the law. I realize that, but answer my question. <laughs> were, uh, were harems always illegal, Doc? Uh, no, sir. Years ago, uh, harems were legal in Persia. A man could have all the wives that he desired in order to get closer to his heaven. Get closer to what? To his heaven. Why would a, wa a man... <laughs> That's why a man would want more than one wife so he'd be closer to heaven? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's certainly getting to heaven the hard way. Eh? <laughs> Are there, are there still many harems in Persia? Uh, no, sir, there are not. They're very, it, it's against the law now. 
But there are a few places that they still would leg him. <laughs> well, see if you can get me a case of 20-year-old stuff right off the boat, will you? <laughs> Why did they figure they were closer to heaven if they had a number of wives? You see, Mr. Marx, when uh, we figure in, in Persia, when you have only one wife, she might be good cook, maybe ugly, or not good dancer, or good singer. But if you have more than one wife, one will be good cook, one will be good dancer, one will be good singer. In this way, you receive all the pleasures of life right here, and then you are closer to your heaven. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the... Under those conditions, the cook certainly gets a great deal, all right. <laughs> Slaving over a hot pot roast all day. <laughs> well, you're out dancing with six other wives. <laughs> now, Red Grange, that's you. Uh, uh, since we have a chiropractor here, perhaps we can squeeze a little free advice from him, huh? Have you ever come out of a game with a Charlie horse? Yes, sir, many times. What'd you do about it? Well, I had a trainer rub it and had it wrapped. Well, after he wraps it, where do you send it to? <laughs> Santa Anita? <laughs> What do you do? You rub it down with alcohol? Is that yes, what you... sir. It can be very dangerous, you know. My Uncle Julius hurt his back, and Minnie rubbed it with alcohol. Then Uncle Julius sprained his neck trying to lick it off. <laughs> now, as a, as a football player, what, what's been your most embarrassing moment, Jess? Well, the most embarrassing moment I ever had was I was playing football down in San Diego Navy, and we had a big banquet where all the high mucky muck brass was there, and I was sitting at the table with the speakers, and... I accidentally knocked over a coffee pot in the Big Shot slab. What happened? I had a lot of time to think that over. Co coffee was much cheaper in those days, too. Now, now Sheiky, uh, in your profession, you must have had a few spine-tingling experiences. Can you... Can you recall any incident in particular that you'd care to discuss? Well, one of them that was very embarrassing, when I first uh, got to this country, my first professional match, I was booked as the great Rasen Sheik of Persia. The arena was all sold out. As I entered into the ring, uh, I thought I'll show them how uh, Persian wrestlers are. And there we are trained to be very mannerly, very polite. So naturally I walked in, I bowed to the public, and I bowed to the referee, and then I bowed to the wrestler and went back to my corner. When the bell rang again, I bowed to the public and I bowed to the referee. <laughs> and uh, as I bowed to the wrestler, he let me have one right close right to the chin. I went back and he let me have one in the uh, stomach and I bowed again and that was the end of the match. <laughs> Well, that'll teach you not to be polite in this country. Huh? It was a short match, huh? Very short. Next time, use a lighter. Now, in addition to being a sheik, in addition to being a sheik and a chiropractor, you also are a professional wrestler, eh, Doc? I used to be. You can take a person apart and then uh, put them back together again? Huh? Uh, where, where have you wrestled? I have wrestled just about throughout the world. I have held three professional titles. The Asiatic Walterweight, Catch, catch and jiu-jitsu title, also the junior middleweight belt of the world. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. You do jiu-jitsu too, huh? I didn't know you did jiu-jitsu, Doc. I hope you'll overlook any remarks I made here. <laughs> if you don't, my friends can overlook me at Cedars 11 and between 2 and 4 next Sunday. <laughs> well, you've been an interesting couple and physically I'll never be the same. Now, before we proceed, George, is something from our sponsor. Certainly do, Groucho. For Jess, these beautiful Elgin American pearls. They're the finest pearls made by man, Jess. <laughs> Jess, you're gonna look lovely in those things. <laughs> Actually, well, that'll fit right on the USC squad. Huh? <laughs> I had in mind maybe, Jess, you could give these to your girl. Thanks very much. You bet you're welcome. No, you can, you can throw them at the football, and then it'll be pearls before swine. <laughs> I have a gift for well, the Well, they are pigskins. <laughs> What have you got for Shiki over here? For the doctor, I have this exclusive Elgin American Square Compact in jeweler's bronze that looks like gold. I'm sure your wife will enjoy it very much, doctor. It's a good thing we're not doing this in Persia. You'd have to have seven of those, huh? <laughs> okay, let's play You Bet Your Life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous rivers as your category. 
Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. All right. You've got $20. How much do you want to try? Uh, Ten, sir. Ten? Here's your first question. Hoover Dam controls the waters of what great western river? Talk right up. Colorado. Colorado, Colorado is right. <laughs> For a good start with $30. All right, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? $10, sir. Ten, ten dollar. All right. What is the name of the sacred Indian river of the Hindus? They bathe in its waters to be purified. Uh, uh, I know it, though. N not now. Take a guess. Uh, Take a guess. I, uh, get mixed uh, up. I'm sorry. It's the Ganges. Ganges, yeah. It's I'll get Ganges. mixed up. Well, that's a tough one. That's yeah. not No, too I easy. should know that. Well, you ought to know it, yes. They now have $20, Groucho. Well, you only lost 10 that time. You still have $20. And here's your third question. How much of the 20 will you try? Yeah, $10. $10. What is the name of the Northwestern River where the salmon spawn each year? The Grand Coulee Dam is on it. Columbia. The Columbia River. <laughs> And they're on their way again. They have $30. All right, you're coming around the stretch now. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much will you bet you got 30 bucks? 20. $20. What is the name of the river immortalized by Mark Twain? It is called the Father of Waters. Uh, 20 River. No, we don't. Oh, no, no, we no. Come on now. Now think. Mark Twain wrote a couple of books about it. Mississippi. 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 You said it right as the bell rang. Give it all. Uh -huh. And they wind up with a grand total of $50. And that means that the car hop and the married man with $228 get the chance at the $1,000 question. Well, I'm sorry, but you did pretty well on that. And now, a word from Myron Wallace. And here's the car hop, and the married man, our winning couple tonight, Groucho. Ready to try for a thousand bucks, eh? Good luck, and I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so talk it over thoroughly, and no help from the audience, you rascals out there. Okay, here we go. You ready? You got your thinking caps on? Hmm? Mm hmm Okay. In 1876, government troops were annihilated in the Battle of the Little Big Horn. What general was in command of the doomed forces? All right, now what is the answer you two have decided upon? The only one I can think of is Custer. General Custer is right. That's right, you win $1,000. Well, you had the right answer, so you win $1,000 from Elgin American Compacts, and you also win $270. $78. Or is it $228? $228. Well, a few bucks. You really cleaned up tonight. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you very much. Elgin American Show, You Bet Your Life, is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Remember, next week's big question pays $1,000. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life. Well, this brings us to the end of three very pleasant years of association with Elgin American Compacts. And I'd like to thank them for their interest and cooperation in presenting our show. Next week, we'll have a new sponsor. So I'll say good night with this final reminder. Have you looked at your compact lately? Good night.